Hey, I would guess that discovering your purpose in life is probably somewhere near the top of things that you would like to figure out as a teenager, as a high school student. It Maybe not at the very top, maybe like finding a boyfriend or a girlfriend, but you know, somewhere along the line, discovering your purpose in life has got to be up there. Last week, we started this series that we started talking about this, recognizing that when you encounter Jesus— he brings purpose into your life, and it means that we drop everything and we follow him. You guys remember this? So you talked about the calling of the first disciples and how when Jesus uh, called them and asked them to follow him, they, they dropped everything and they started following him. And that's difficult, I think. I've always struggled with that story because, I mean, these guys dropped everything that they knew to follow Jesus in an instant. Following Jesus requires surrender. It requires surrender in your life. In fact, when you look at maybe the purpose of Christ in your lives, we will also recognize, this is where we're going to go tonight, that following Jesus, it actually develops and requires your life to change. Life change is what happens when you actually truly encounter Jesus and follow him. That's the purpose of following Christ, is that your life is going to change. And when I think about life change, I think it can be kind of hard for all of us because um, many of us have grown up in the church, right? Not everybody. Maybe some of you in here, you, you, your, your family didn't grow up in church. But many of us, you probably don't feel like you have this testimony where I was the worst person ever, and then I knew Jesus, and now I'm like not the worst person ever, right? You don't feel like you have that testimony, and that's okay because, you know, guys like Peter and James and John, they didn't have that type of testimony either. Paul did, but, you know, not those guys, right? They, they didn't have that. And so, what we also know, and what we'll come to understand, is that your life is going to change or should change both morally and ethically when you encounter Jesus. It should. Your life, when you truly encounter Jesus and decide to follow him, it will change morally and ethically. And I think many of us are probably in a place in, in life where you call yourself a Christian— but you haven't actually taken the necessary steps to truly follow Jesus because it's difficult. It's, it's counter-cultural. It, it, it would require you to stand out. It'd mean that you wouldn't cheat on any of your homework or anything like that or share answers because of your witness. It would mean that you don't gossip and talk about other people because of uh, your own personal integrity. It'd mean that you would give up things in your life that bring you comfort because it also requires you to follow Christ. Finding your purpose will require something from you in your life. So here's my question, and I really want you to think about this, this question. How much do you want to follow Jesus right now? Like right now in your life, right where you are, wherever you find yourself, how much do you actually want to follow him. And I, I'm, I'm being serious. I want you to think about how you'd answer that question. Sure, you're here tonight, right? Like, you, you probably have some desire to follow Jesus and to grow in your faith, but like, how much? To, to, to what extent? Like, what if it costs you something? What if it costs you your, your popularity? Or what if it costs you some friends? Or what if it costs you some things in your life that you really like? Or, or, or anything like that? If I'm honest— I don't know how to answer that question for you. And I would almost guarantee you that not all of us have the same answer to this question. Some of us maybe desperately really do want to follow Jesus and we'll do what's necessary, but others of us just kind of here for the friends or socially or maybe your parents make you be here. I'm not really sure, but to what extent do you want to follow Jesus right now? And here's why I ask you that. And I want to explore this idea because you won't find your purpose in this life or what God has for you until you choose, until you choose to truly follow Jesus in your life. Your choice. So there's a great example of this in the New Testament. This is where we're going to go tonight from a man named Zacchaeus. Um, Zacchaeus was, uh, I need to tell you about Zacchaeus to understand truly why this is important for us. It's found in Luke chapter 19. And so you could turn there in your Bibles or in your Bible apps. Um, all the stuff is in there as well. Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector, and what that means, some of you who grew up in church know this. Tax collectors were like hated people, right? They, nobody liked tax collectors because um, 
they were of Jewish descent. They were Jews, which is what all uh, God's people and Jesus, they were all Jews. They were Jews, but they collected taxes from Jews for the Roman government. Okay? And so they made a living um, and, and a work for collating taxes from their own people. And so everyone hated them. And here's why. Rome didn't pay tax collectors. They didn't have salary. Okay? Their salary was made off of um, taxing you and then taking money off the top of that. And so if I were to go to Braden and say, hey, you owe me $20 in tax for the Roman government, you'd pay me $20 and maybe I would keep five of it and turn the other 15. And then I would do that to you and you and you and you and you and you. And so all of a sudden I've made a living off of a really dirty and filthy way, right? Because I'm taking your money for myself and then passing it on to the Romans. That's what a tax collector did. Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector, and he didn't get there by working really hard. He got there by being crooked and filthy, more crooked and more filthy than all the other tax collectors. That's how he became a chief tax collector. Zacchaeus would have been an outcast among his own people. They hated tax collectors. He would have been rich, but he would have been an outcast, and so that's who Zacchaeus was, and so It's on the screen, or if you got it in front of you, we're going to read the stories. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Here's what it says. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short and could not see over the crowd, so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached that spot, where Zacchaeus was, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. And so he came down at once, and he welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this, and they began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus, in that moment, he stood up, and he said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. So Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Now, you're probably familiar with the story of Zacchaeus. And there's a lot to be said about how Jesus sees Zacchaeus and what he says to him and how he treats him. But for tonight, really what I want to look at is focusing on how Zacchaeus responded to Jesus and his interaction with Jesus. And when we look at um, what Zacchaeus did in his interaction with Jesus, how he responded, we can learn things about our own purpose and our life when we encounter Jesus. So I've got two ideas for you tonight. Can you hang with me for two ideas? Here's the first one. Your decision to follow Jesus needs to matter to you first. Did you notice what's interesting about this interaction with Jesus and Zacchaeus? Jesus didn't tell Zacchaeus what to do. He didn't tell him what to do. He didn't even tell him he was doing anything wrong, although that becomes obvious to Zacchaeus, right? Jesus simply invites himself into Zacchaeus' life, and through that, Zacchaeus decides what he needs to do for himself, right? So Zacchaeus decides to give half of his possessions to the poor, and he decides to pay back everyone that he is wrong, which is probably everybody, right? And then, um, and, and so what we learn is that he's not told what to do or, or how to live. Zacchaeus, his decision mattered to him first. Before Jesus says, you're wrong, this is how you should live, this is what you should do, Zacchaeus made the decision for himself. He felt the pull of God or the Holy Spirit somewhere inside of him to do what was right, and that's what he did. And here's why I think this is important for you as a high school student. You need to care about the decisions that you make. Most importantly, you need to care about the decision to follow Jesus. Your decision. Here's, I'll be honest with you for a second. This is the gap that we have. This is the gap that you feel. This is the gap that I've seen over and over. In order for your relationship with God to work, it has to be something that you care about. Not something that someone else told you to do. Not something that your parents make you do. Not, something, not any of that. This has to be something that you care about. 
And the sad truth, because I've done youth ministry long enough, and I've seen it, I can smell it, I can spot it, and I know it's true, is that some of you are indifferent. Like, you're here, but done, I don't know if it's your decision, if you're here for a different reason, or you're here because your parents want you to be here. You don't really care all that much about following Jesus in your life, a little bit. And socially, like, I, I feel like this is the, the way that I should live, but not all the way. How you talk to people or talk about people or what you watch or what you listen to or, or what you do with your free time or how you behave at school, all of those decisions are important because all of those decisions reflect who you are on the inside. I'll be real, if you don't care to be Christ-like, then we are wasting our time talking about how to be Christ-like. Like we could do all these messages and all these series and, and encourage you to do all these things, but at the end of the day, your decision to follow Jesus has to matter to you first for this to work. The Fuller Youth Institute says that 40 to 50 percent of you right now won't be following Jesus one year after high school. And so you wonder, well, why is that? Why are always those are always the statistics? Why? It's because your decision wasn't ever really your decision. You're here for, because someone else wants you to be here, or you're here because you think you're supposed to be here. At the end of the day, this is what it has to come down to. You have to care first. You need to care about whether you decide, what, what, what you decide to do, whether it brings you closer to God or brings you further away from God. At the end of the day, it's your choice on how close you will choose to draw closer to Jesus or if you will choose things that will draw you further away. Your purpose in following Jesus is only going to be revealed when you start pursuing it like Zacchaeus did in this moment. He wasn't told what to do. No one told him to climb the tree. No one told him to do any of those things that he did when he met Jesus. And this is what we have to recognize for us too. This is, this is not something that can be forced on you. This is real talk for a minute. This can't be forced upon you. You can't be pressured to do this because of your family. Christianity, following Jesus, doing that for a lifetime, this is your choice. You have to choose Jesus and his way of life if you want all of this to work that it's supposed to. I can tell you exactly when that happened for me. It was, it was in the summer in between my, when I was a seventh grader going into an eighth grader. From that time forward, I grew up in the church. I was like many of you. and not, I was actually a bad kid at church. I remember getting sit, put in the hallway at Sunday school when I was in like third or fourth grade. I think I threw scissors at a kid one time as, in Sunday school class. I don't know what he did to me. But um, I, I was always at, I was at church for things, but it was always because that's what I did. That's what my mom told me to do. But somewhere along the line of that seventh grade to eighth grade year, I made the, it became my choice, and I decided this is what I want for me. And my life looked different from that moment. My, my, my friends changed, my music changed, my habits changed. My life started to look different because it wasn't someone else telling me to follow Jesus. I decided to follow Jesus. And so my life looked different, and life changed. And that's really because your decision to follow Jesus will bring change into your life. It has to. And if it doesn't, then you're not doing it right. Your decision to follow Jesus will bring change into your life. That's ultimately what we see from Zacchaeus in this moment. His encounter with Jesus led to his decision to change his life, right? So he says he's going to pay back money to the people that he owed, right? Not because he was told to, but because he knew he needed to change. Here's what you also see. I find this so fascinating. Jesus didn't call him out of tax collecting. He didn't tell him. He didn't say, Zacchaeus, you, you know, you really shouldn't be a tax collector, right? He didn't do any of that. What did he do? He invited himself to his house to share a meal. And so Zacchaeus chose to change how he lived his life, and it impacted people around him. Think about this. First, for all the people that he cheated, Right? Everybody was going to get four times the amount, right? Second, the poor were going to be impacted by his decision. He was going to give half of his possessions to the poor. Third, because Zacchaeus continued to be a tax collector, everyone now, for, from now on out, how they were going to be treated with their taxes was going to be treated fairly. 
And so G- Zacchaeus' decision to follow Jesus not only changed people, uh, people around him right then and there and, and uh, for retribution, but even moving forward. So I don't want you to lose sight of that, but here's what I want you to ultimately see, is that you don't get to encounter Jesus and choose to follow him and stay the same. Following Jesus requires change, unless you're perfect, but it requires change. You, you, do you remember the story where some religious leaders were trying to trap Jesus, and they brought a woman caught in adultery, right? Which is such a bizarre thing, because it's like, how do you catch somebody doing that? But it was, it was a setup, right? It was a setup. And so they, they bring this woman to Jesus, and um, so they say, you know, Jesus, she's been caught in the act of adultery. We caught her, and so here she is. The law of Moses says we should stone her and kill her. What do you say? And so in this, in this moment, Jesus, it says he stoops down. He starts writing in the sand with his finger. And uh, the story, most of you know, is that they wanted Jesus to condemn her, which he doesn't. He shows her grace, and here's what happens. John chapter 8 says this. Jesus straightened up. So he bends down, and he straightens up, and he asks her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She says, no one. And neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. You see, in this moment, there's so many things we could draw from this story in John chapter 8, but he called her to change. Even in the midst of her sin, or, or how she was caught, he called her to change. And here's what I want you to know. Jesus, I need to say this. Jesus loves you as you are. Can everybody hear that? Jesus loves you as you are. Don't misunderstand me. There is nothing that you can do or say or be that will make God love you any more or any less. He loves you exactly the way that you are. You are made in the image of God and you have value right now for who you are. There are some people in this world that will try to convince you otherwise and, and, and make you think that you have to change. You, you cannot change in any way in your life that would make God love you more. Do you understand this? He loves you exactly the way that you are. That's the beauty of the gospel. It's, a, it's not, and nothing that we earned or, or, or did or, or how we live or behave. It's that while we are broken, while we are sinful, Jesus died for us. And it doesn't matter how together your life is. He, he died for all of us. None of us deserve it, but all of us can accept it. But I don't want you to misunderstand me either because Paul reiterates this in the same way that Jesus says, go now and leave your life of sin. Paul says this, well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? No, of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? We turn away from our sin because it's a response to his grace of what he has done for us. It's a way to respond to his love. And that's what happened to Zacchaeus in this moment. It's likely that Zacchaeus has never been noticed or recognized or talked to the way that Jesus did in this moment for him. And so, as Zacchaeus changed, I really think that's what needs to happen in our lives. My fear is that some of us has gotten to, because I've been there too, some of us has gotten so comfortable thinking this thought. Well, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. Or I'm not as bad as them. Or like that group. Or this, I mean, look at me. I'm at church. I'm not, I'm not as bad as, 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 as someone else, and so I don't really have to change a whole lot in my life. And I promise you, if you just dial in for a second, I promise you that Jesus is calling you to change something in your life. Something. To follow him more closely. I don't know what that is, but there's something there. Because I do know that none of you are perfect. Because I'm not perfect. None of us are. I don't know what that is. It's possible that if you were to dial in for a minute, the Holy Spirit might be able to speak that into your heart. To reveal that to you tonight. What is it? What what? What needs to change? Is it gossip? Is it pride? Is it how you treat, talk to your parents? Is it pornography? There's, there's, there's something in your life that needs to change for you to truly follow Jesus and draw closer to him and to find your purpose. And if you want to find your perf- purpose, it's going to require you to change your morals and your ethics.
That's what happened to Zacchaeus. You won't get to be like the rest of the world. You, you won't get to be the same. You won't get to blend in. You, you will live countercultural. You will be different. You will stand out. But your purpose in this world is not to blend in and to be like everybody else. Your purpose is to follow Jesus. First, like what we talked about last week, to drop everything and to follow him, to get rid of all those things. And second, by changing the way that you live. And so, I'm asking you tonight to consider this question. What needs to change in your life for you to find the purpose that Jesus has for you? Because there's things in the way. There are things in the way of your life that, that you are messing around with, that you are dealing with. Um, well, like for Zacchaeus, it was tax collecting and how he treated people and how he cheated people and how he's probably prideful and selfish, all those type of things. You're not a tax collector. But what in your life is in the way of you following Jesus truly? What in your, what in your life have, is, is stopping you from actually drawing closer to him but you aren't really dealing with it. What have you been involved in that needs to change for you to figure this out? If you ignore these questions, you're going to have a hard time ultimately finding your purpose in this life. You've got to wrestle with this. You, you have to be not only willing to climb the tree to experience Jesus, but also willing to change when you come down from the tree and live the rest of your life. So my bottom line for you to maybe remember all this is that when you allow Jesus to change your life, your life finds purpose. This is what happened for me. Is that when I finally allowed Jesus to really, truly rule in my life, my life found the purpose, the purpose that God has for my life, and I think the same can happen for you. But you have to let Him change your life. If you want to call yourself a Christian and and blend in and be like everybody else and watch all the same stuff and listen to all the same stuff and talk all the same way. It's never the example that we find in Scripture. When people encounter Jesus, their life changes. Zacchaeus' life changed. This woman caught in adultery, he says, stop doing that. Follow me. Leave your life of sin. Follow me. This, and this is what he's calling for you. Don't let fear hold you back from, from changing and don't let your purpose in this world be swallowed by the things of this world, because that happens all too easily. So I want you to consider what is something that you need to change in your life. And if you can answer that, if you can answer that question, you can follow him and find your purpose.